Hi everyone, for this active tip I just wanted to actually go through a lesson that I recently did in a classroom just to give you some ideas of how you can incorporate all these concepts into a flip chart. Now again, it's not the perfect lesson, but maybe it can help you, you know, come up with some ideas for your own lessons. So we're going to entitle this Active Tip Episode 4. So again, this was a lesson that I did uh, recently on analyzing graphs of polynomial functions. So I had my objectives here. Basically use the camera tool to be able to put this on. In fact, I'll show you this. I even kind of messed up here. But you can kind of see how I have this, the hand, on a different layer. And we talked about different layers and how to take objects and move them in different layers and stuff. But that was the objectives for this particular lesson. Now the nice thing about these boards, you know, you can have seamless instruction. You know, basically lesson started out where basically showing the students how to be able to graph a polynomial function using a calculator, how to be able to find the zeros, how to find the local minimums and local maximums. And so I actually have a link, part of my toolbar up here, I actually have a link that opens up a graphing program that's on my machine. So now again, seamless instruction where I don't have to go and close, minimize something and open something else up. It can be seamless. And so I actually had the calculator right here. I actually had the example all ready to go. So I didn't even have to take the time with the students to go to the Y equals screen and type in this problem. I already had it saved where I had this exact problem already entered in the calculator. So I didn't have to fumble around up at the board and then from here we can see the graph and then I was able to talk about and demonstrate right in front how to find the zeros, how to be able to calculate the zeros. And again I was able to go firsthand. So if I wanted to find this zero, I could set the left bound. I'm going to set the right bound. We talked about, you know, the guess, and then you can see the zero right there at point at point one. One and then I was able to use the magic ink to actually show that. So I actually had the answer already ahead of time. Uh, I was able to use the beyond the world beyond the page to have this come in. So a little definition about the turning points and the concept of the maximum number of turning points. So again, I had this all set up ahead of time to be able to go over this particular problem. So we can see the entire answer right there. So again, Magic Ink, a lot of different concepts that I talked about in my other active tips. Here we have a question that I wanted the students to be able to try on their own. Again, this is the first time they're seeing this particular type of question, but I wanted them to look at an example that was in their textbook and then work together. And after enough time, I actually wanted them to see if they can come up with an answer as far as the maximum volume and this was set up. I actually have a question so that is we use the uh, active expressions so after about five minutes or so I wanted them to text in their answer. And again the results uh, for this particular problem the first time seeing it uh, I expected them to be relatively low uh, but we went over the answer and again this was a nice way of revealing the answer I just pull this out and it shows the steps of actually how to set up this particular problem. It showed them a couple of ways to reset the window size so they can actually see the graph and be able to find the actual volume, the maximum volume on the calculator. So the answer was 160.58 inches cubed. Uh, again, first time seeing this particular problem, we went over it, we discussed it, uh, but then I also show them how they can use a program called GeoGebra to actually calculate the answer. And then we have a follow-up question. And now this time I expected the results to be a lot better after seeing how to set up this particular problem. So I uh, gave everyone a chance to be able to type in this answer. And what's nice is this right here is a link. Again, seamless. It's real easy to insert a link. takes me to this particular site where I created a GeoGebra 
problem that's set up for this a particular example where I have a sheet of paper that's 10 by 6. And what's nice about GeoGebra is I can manipulate this. Again, this is the answer for this particular problem, but I could actually move the sliders and set up a different problem. And um, by the way, uh, right now this isn't full screen. You don't see everything on this particular web page, but if I go to Tools using Internet Explorer, I can enter full screen mode where I can see the entire page. Uh, what's nice about this is, again, I can use these sliders and change the problem. So if I had a sheet of paper or a cardboard, piece of cardboard, had say dimension 6 by 8. You just move the sliders, and then I get to move the height to be able to find the maximum volume. Let me show the box right there. Is the box, and I can actually calculate then by just sliding this to be able to find the maximum volume, which is right in this area, right about there. So for this particular problem, this would be my dimensions of my box. 3.74 by 5.74 by 1.3, where this is the height, and then this would be the volume, the maximum volume for this particular box where you're cutting out the pieces. So GeoGebra is a great product, and there's so much that you can do with uh, GeoGebra, and it really brings many math concepts alive. So if you want to check out GeoGebra, there are some uh, samples that I have on my website. So if you have the chance, you know, open up, uh, go to my website, and look for the page where I have some GeoGebra samples. It's great. Plus, we're going to be offering a workshop for uh, on GeoGebra for all the math teachers. Okay, now this also is going to reveal the answer again. I had this set up for the active expressions, so students were able to do the problem and then pick up the active expressions and then type in their answer and I was looking for the volume. This is going to reveal the answer and again they were able to either use a calculator or I actually had the laptop so they could also use the GeoGebra program to type in the function and be able to find the local maximum. And the y value of the local maximum is the actual volume then. So the y-axis is really the volume of the particular box. Okay, after, after going over that example, what I did, I have a couple more questions for the uh, response systems, the active expressions. So I wanted them to try this problem to pick out the equation for this particular function just based on looking at this graph. I didn't want them to actually use the calculator. I didn't want them to actually have to type in each of the functions to see if it matches up. So if they use some concepts of like M behavior and the idea of the y-intercept, it's pretty easy to be able to find the correct answer. Same way with this last problem here where I was able to go through and have the students be able to respond. Then I gave them some problems to do in, the, in, the, in their book and they were able to use the laptops. They were able to use the GeoGebra program and actually just real quickly I'll show you that I had some examples. Again, this is a link to the GeoGebra program. So, so for this particular example, uh, they had to, it was a word problem in the book, uh, number 36 in their textbook, where it was dealing with uh, pounds of oranges and years since 1991, until we need a new textbook. Anyway, they w needed to find the turning points, and again, by using this program, it was real easy to be able to find the answers. So if I actually change my view, I can actually see the values. Real easy to use. They just had to type in the function from the book, and then they were able to find the turning points, and then they had to relate that, what that actually meant. Okay. Okay, hopefully by watching this active tip, going over a lesson, hopefully you can get, get some ideas of how you can actually use this within your classroom.